Okay, so now I'm working on the body and trying to figure out where I'm going to put everything. Now, originally, when I started this project, I thought that I was going to sort of hollow out the drawer like this, as I discussed, and then just have sort of an open tray that we could pop out and, and use to access everything, meaning the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. But I've changed my mind. This is the drawer as it would be in the um, Roby. This is the old tape deck. And the tape deck was held together and inside this compartment here. So all the electronics and gears and pulleys for the tape deck were in here. Now this is carefully integrated into this top deck that's up here. Okay, there's this top deck and that enables this sliding mechanism. Okay, so that's separate from this drawer. So what I did with this drawer is I sort of just cut this entire section out and then thought I'd use that for a drawer, but I'm second guessing that now. I don't like the way it looks, but more importantly, it does take away from Roby's original, original aesthetic, which was sort of a tape deck. Now, I have no intention of leaving this as a tape deck, but as it turns out, I can fit the Arduino and Raspberry Pi pretty nicely right here uh, in the opening where the old push buttons were for the tape player. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is just razor knife and cut out the tape deck and see if that leaves me enough room to access everything without destroying the entire drawer mechanism which leads to problems when I try to reassert it to the top, uh, top tray. Um, so that would look like, if I take the bottom off, I could have access to the um, Arduino input. And with a little bit of shaving, I can also do the same thing with the Raspberry Pi side to side. And then I don't have to worry about where I'm going to plug things in when I want to reprogram Roby. He's going to need a lot of programming once he's put together. So that's an option. We're gonna try that. I've taken a razor knife and scored all the way around the old tape deck and we'll see if I can pop that out and leave everything else intact, which would be great. And then we'll find out if I have enough room to actually wire things in there. These old plastics score pretty well. So I just ran a few score lines down, gave it a break point in the middle. And now I'm just trying to sort of break that out of there by wiggling it back and forth and we'll see what happens. These harder plastics are easily scored and this works pretty well. As long as you're careful, rather than using any kind of a drill or a saw, it'll just ruin it. Uh, scoring is pretty much the only option you have if you want everything to fit back together when you're done with it. So that's starting to work. And I've got half of it out and I'll work on the other half and we'll take a look at that. Well, I don't think I could ask for much better than that. As you can see, I'd be able to fit the Arduino and Raspberry Pi side to side. I have enough room to sort of install everything. The speaker and button, they'll be removed, but for now they're still attached for programming purposes. And all I have to do is uh, boost the Arduino and Raspberry Pi up off the floor a bit, which is good for ventilation to make them line up nicely with the old uh, button slot. And a little breadboard is just what's needed to give the height. So, you know, we can do this better. All right, so here's the finished drawer. It has the Arduino and it has Raspberry Pi. It's all assembled so that when you push this button, it pops out the drawer and we have access here to get into it. Everything's wired up. I'll set that aside. This is what the drawer looks like when you take it out of the robot. It has PC board on top. This is the clock interface. When you pop it open, you would have the tape deck. So what I did was take all of the tape deck guts out, all the buttons out to get a hollow drawer, something like this. And that gave me room to put in all the new electronics. So I cut out a place on the side to put the HDMI. Right now it's just taped together. I had to cut out a hole in the bottom to get the wires through. And pull the tape off. If you pull the tape off, it doesn't like the tape. 
it won't even slide. Like it, the tolerances are so clear that it won't let it slide. So if I open that up, you can see how that was all put together into the box. All ready to go. All right, so the next thing to do is to take all the wires that are in the robot base and fish those up through the hole in the box to attach everything to the computers. At the same time, I'll be putting all that together with the shell here, and I'll have to fish top wires that have to go down into the base from the computers as well. So once I figure out what the best approach to that is, I'll take a look at that. All right, so here's the base all hooked up. There's the motor driver. That's hooked up here down into the Arduino. I have power, which I'm going to run separately, one for Arduino, one for Raspberry Pi. What you see here are power for the uh, Arduino up front, power for the Raspberry Pi back here. And these are power and ground for uh, the two left and right uh, sensors. The middle sensor will go here, and that has been wired but not hooked up because we're not that far up on the robot yet. So that's what everything looks like. And next, to put all of that together. All right, so Roby is starting to look like his old self. He's nice and shiny and white. He looks fantastic. I've gotten the computers into the drawer here. I'm doing a little freehand videography here because I broke my tripod. Uh, we push the button, which still is labeled Radio Shack. We get the drawer that pops out that gives access to the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, change of plan here. I originally intended to have one of the sonic sensors, which I have right and left, right up here in the chest, right in this area. And that's just not working out. It could, it's just not working out. I have drilled the holes twice. I don't know how I was able to make it work in the stand so easily or in the base so easily. Uh, ruined three good pieces of plastic trying to mount those in the chest. So I think that's Roby's way of telling me don't do that. So I y have yet to figure out what I'm going to do as far as a sensor for his higher up area so that he knows he can't climb under furniture because down here he thinks he can get around underneath chairs and tables and couches and all that. So what has to happen is I thought I'd have a sensor here um, not going to happen, at least right now. I may put an infrared sensor in this panel. But what I did for now is I added the LCD panel that I've had in my drawer forever. Um, and I'm probably going to use that to, um, at first, show maybe just, uh, you know, just an introduction message that says, Hi, I'm Roby. Or maybe when he's in roaming mode, it will say roaming. Uh, eventually, I can get that tied into the Raspberry Pi. Um, and it can display things like the weather or the answers to questions that Roby is answering through uh, the Google Voice service. Now, that's not something I originally planned for this, so it, it's kind of just going to hang there for now until I get around to doing that. Um, and I'll probably do that as sort of a bonus video when I put that together. I will need to add some other things to this. His ears for uh, the Google Voice uh, module are probably gonna, going to go in this panel. Just little tiny holes, you won't be able to see those microphones, but they'll be in there. And then I'll probably install a um, infrared detector to at least give him some sense of how, uh, how far away furniture and things like that are. I'd really like to do that up in the head, but with the dome on, I can't do that. None of that stuff is going to work if I put it in the face. So that leaves really just the outside of the body, and I really, really don't want to ruin his aesthetic by adding too much junk hanging off the outside of him, and that's why I've you know, gone to all the trouble of making everything nice and flush as if it was factory original. Once I get that all wired with power, the only thing left to do is the head. And that's going to be relatively easy. I'm going to be removing uh, all of the light bulbs uh, from the mouth and the eyes, and I'm going to be reusing the Raspberry Pi uh, AIY voice kit 
um, to rewire LEDs into the eyes and a separate LED into the mouth. When you say, hey, Roby, or whatever we decide we want uh, to have his wake up word be, uh, his eyes will blink, um, probably blue. I use blue LEDs. And then when he's actually speaking, the response coming through the Google Voice Kit, his mouth will blink. Uh, and that will probably be a white LED. And maybe if I get really creative, I'll, I'll put it, uh, an RGB LED in there. But right now my plan is just for a white LED. So he's all shined up and he looks really good, probably better than he ever did originally. I do apologize that this is not a very professional video. I have to do everything by hand right now. But I wanted there to be an update. Um, and as soon as I get that new sensor in, um, we'll be putting the code in, walking through the code and see how he performs just as an autonomous robot. And then the final step is to work on the head and the Google Voice uh, functionality. Last thing I have to do cosmetically is choose a face shield and clean it up, polish it up just like I did the body so that we can see right through to the face and he'll look just good as new and ready to go. So that's the update. Thanks for watching.